Okay, welcome to this video in our Head Start for Economics series. And in this second introductory video, we're going to introduce a key concept, gross domestic product or GDP, which is a measure of economic activity. So what is GDP? Well, it uh, measures the monetary value of a country's output of goods and services, and those goods and services are produced within the geographical boundaries of a nation. GDP remains an important indicator for many, including the government and the financial markets. And as a concept, GDP dates from the Second World War and the fallout from the Great Depression, when politicians wanted a better measure that set out what was happening to the economy as a whole. We live in a modern, complex economy that makes millions of different products, but we, t we can still group them into four main sectors, if you like, and each of those has the potential to add value, uh, which together adds up to the data on our GDP, which gets published regularly. So, for example, the primary sector includes mining and farming, fishing, forestry and energy. The secondary industries include manufacturing industries and the construction sector. The tertiary industries include many, including travel and tourism, education and health and business and financial services. And quaternary includes information technology and research and development. So we can break those uh, that GDP figure into the output, the value of output that derives from each of those different sectors. Here's a quick exercise for you. Can you look at this picture and can you find six different industries, if you like, or sectors of the UK economy in this picture? Press the pause button and try to produce a list of possible sectors that link to the picture shown and just press play when you want to crack on with the video. Well, this was my attempt to try and find six different industries. Uh, you, may have, you may have got more than six. Obviously, beef farming itself at the primary stage would be an important aspect of this. Uh, then the next stage will be things like food processing, turning beef into you know beef uh, slices for sandwiches, etc. Food retailing is a key part of the economy. Little there shown. Uh, Fast-growing deep discounter from Germany. There's a whole sector around advertising and marketing including traditional billboards, but also, of course, TV and social media. You could also expect to include the house building sector in this picture and also the, the businesses that make and maintain and build the paving shown in this picture. In any picture of the economy, you're going to get different sectors contributing value to the total output. So what share of GDP comes from each of the main UK industries? Let's take a quick look at the data for the UK. And here it is, showing the percentage of GDP by value added in 2019. Notice here how small in relative terms is the size of the, of the farming or the agricultural sector. Indeed, it accounted for only 0.7% rounded up here in, uh, of GDP in 2019. Mining, energy and water together add another 3.4% to GDP. So those extractive primary industries uh, account for less than 5% of the national output of the UK. Manufacturing and construction together provide 16% of GDP. And all of the remaining sectors essentially are public and private sector services, energy, sorry, education, healthcare, retailing, transport and storage, etc. Indeed, together, services account for around 80% of the national output of the UK economy. Before we finish the second video, let's a few, a few words on the difficulties that many economists now have with GDP uh, as a reliable measure of national economic activity. Uh, there's a big debate, for example, about some of the paradoxes of GDP. If I am playing football uh, in the garden and I break a window with a, an errant shot, the broken window actually technically adds to GDP. Uh, somebody's got to replace it, and of course there's a service and a, and a, and a manufactured product there as well if a ship goes to ground and pollutes uh, the coastline. I mean, technically that adds to GDP because of insurance and cleanup costs and replacing, replacing ships, for example. Technological change also makes interpreting GDP increasingly difficult. Many of the things we used to pay for, uh, we no longer do. So we book our holidays online uh, rather than use a travel agent. We search on Google, but we don't necessarily pay a fee at the moment for doing so. 
Third point is there's a large informal economy which GDP Tim's typically doesn't pick up. Lots of people involved, millions of people involved with charitable and voluntary work, providing goods and services. They're not necessarily captured and measured by GDP. We also see a lot of tax avoidance and tax evasion, which deflates the figures. GDP was essentially devised for a mass production volume manufacturing industry that we associate with the 1930s, 40s and 50s. But we now live in a world of increasing digitization and customization. 3D printing, for example, providing lots of intangible value to products. I'll link in the main lesson page to some short videos on GDP and its usefulness as a measure of activity, which have come from some really great economists. But many economists now believe we should focus more on a broader measure of well-being rather than be fixated on just the growth of a country's GDP. Nonetheless, GDP is an important measure of economic activity and we'll develop this further in the third video.